Good day, grade 10s, and welcome to another lesson in this series on functions. In this lesson, we will investigate the changes in the sine and cosine graphs when we change the variables in their equations. Have a look at the general formula for the sine functions, y equals a sine x plus q. The parent function is y equal to sine x, so it has an a value of 1 and a q value of 0. The general formula for the cosine functions is y equals a cos x plus q. The parent function's formula is y equal to cos x, so it also has an a value of 1 and a q value of 0. First, we will look at how changing the A values changes the graph. To make our investigation easier, we will keep the Q value at zero. Then we can be sure that any changes we see in the graphs are caused by the changes we make to the A value. We'll begin by making A equal to two in both the sine and the cosine functions. So now we have Y equal to two sine X and Y equal to two cos x. Be careful here. 2 sine x means 2 times the whole of sine x and 2 cos x means 2 times the whole of cosine x. You can't separate the angle x from the sine or cos ratio. What effect do you think the 2 is going to have on each graph? How will the 2 change the parent graph? By increasing the a value to 2 in the formula, we have changed every y value for the sine and cosine functions by a factor of 2. One way to look at this is to say that each y value on the graphs will be 2 times bigger. So we can multiply them by 2 to find the y values for the new graphs. Let's start with the parent graph of the sine function. I'm going to choose the point here at 90 degrees and 1. Remember that this was a maximum value for the parent graph, so this y value of 1 will become 2. We can plot the point 92 here. Do you see that the new point is twice as high above the x-axis as the point on the parent graph is? So this point has already made the maximum of the new graph something greater than 1. Let's look at another point on the parent graph. What about this point, where x is 30 degrees and y is 0, 0,5? If we double that y value, we get a half times 2, which is 1. So let's plot that point. This is also twice as far from the x-axis as the point on the parent graph. What will happen at this point on the x-axis, where the y value is 0? Well, all points are multiplied by 2 in the same way. But at 0, it doesn't look like it has moved because 2 times 0 is just 0. And we can plot this point at 180, 0. Let's look at a negative value of y now. At 270 degrees, y is negative 1. This was the minimum value of the parent graph. If we multiply by 2, we get negative 2. So we can plot the point 270 and negative 2. Here multiplying by 2 has caused a decrease, but the new point is still twice as far from the x-axis as the point on the parent graph. If we continue to take each point on the parent graph and multiply it by 2, we will create the graph of y equals 2 sine x. It's as if the parent graph has been stretched vertically up and down to form the new graph. We can say that it has a vertical stretch factor of 2. Now, let's look at the parent graph of y equals cosine x. How do you think it needs to change to make the graph of y equals 2 cosine x? Changing all the y values of the parent graph by a factor of 2 changes the parent graph to the graph y equals 2 cosine x. Have you noticed that the cos graph has stretched in the same way that the sine graph stretched? Let me show you. The graph is stretched down and stretched up away from the x-axis. All the y values for this part of the graph will be positive, 
So multiplying by 2 will double the y values, causing the graph to stretch vertically upwards. But because these y values are all negative here, multiplying by 2 will stretch the graph vertically downwards like this. Now let's compare the two parent graphs with the new graphs we've plotted. What do you notice about the maximum and minimum values of the new graphs? The maximum value has changed from 1 to 2 on this graph, and on this graph the maximum has also changed from 1 to 2. So, the maximum on both graphs has been changed from 1 to 2. The minimum value has changed from negative 1 to negative 2. So the range of both graphs is from negative 2 to positive 2. The amplitude of the graph is the maximum distance away from the x-axis, so both graphs have an amplitude of 2. Let's compare the x-intercepts of both sets of graphs. What do you notice about the points at which each graph cuts the x-axis? They have stayed the same because 2 times 0 is still 0. Now, we've seen what happens to the parent graphs when we increase the value of a. Now, let's look at what happens when we decrease the value of a. What do you think the graph will look like if we use an a value of a half? The new formulae will be y equals half sine x and y equals half cosine x. The new graphs will look the same as the parent graphs, except that because a is equal to a half, all the y values will stretch by a factor of a half. But what does it mean to stretch a graph by a factor of a half? Well, the maximum point on the parent sine graph will move from 1 down to a half, and the minimum point on the parent graph will become negative a half. The x-intercepts will stay the same because 0 times a half is still just 0. As before, the sine graph curves between these points. This gives us the graph of y equals a half sine x. So when the a value in the formula is a half, we get a graph that is pulled towards the x-axis. If you compare this graph with the parent graph, you see that each point is half the distance away from the x-axis. Do you think we'll see the same thing happening to the cost graph? Let's have a look. The maximum points will be at a half, and the minimum point will be at a negative a half. The zero values on the parent graph will stay the same on the new graph, and we get the graph of y equals a half cos x. So the a value of a half has the same effect on both the sine graph and the cosine graph. So far, we've tested two values for a to see what effect they have on the graph. You need to test some more values of a for yourselves. What you will find is that if we choose an a value greater than 1, both the parent graphs stretch by a factor of a away from the axis. If we choose a positive a value less than 1, both the parent graphs are pulled towards the x-axis by a factor of a. But what will happen if a is negative? Let's make a equal to negative 1 and see what happens to the parent graphs. The sine and cosine formulas become y equal to negative sine x and y equal to negative cosine x. How do you think the negative will change the parent functions? a is negative 1, so all the y values should change by a factor of negative 1. So, each y value on the parent graphs must keep the same number, but now with a negative value. Let's look at the parent sine graph first. All the y values on the graph here, above the x-axis, are positive. So, multiplying them by a negative 1 will make them negative. And all the y values for this part of the graph below the x-axis are negative and multiplying them by negative 1 will make them positive. So the new graph will look like this. Let's compare the parent graph to the new graph. How do you think we could describe the change in the graph? 
we can describe this change as a reflection of the parent graph above the x-axis. Let me show you. Each point on the parent graph has been reflected to make up the new graph. For example, the point 90, 1 is reflected as the point 90, negative 1. The positive part of the parent graph is reflected over the x-axis to form the negative part of the new graph. And the negative part of the parent graph is reflected over the x-axis to form the positive part of the new graph. Do you think the same thing will happen to the graph of the cosine function? Yes, it does. If we reflect the parent cosine graph about the x-axis, we can form the graph of y equals negative cosine x. And that's because all the positive y's become negative y's, and all the negative y's become positive y's. Now, how do you think the reflection of the parent graph will change if we use negative 2 or negative a half for our a value? Let's start by making a negative 2. The formulas for the sine and cosine functions will become y equal to negative 2 sine x and y equal to negative 2 cosine x. There are two ways of looking at the changes that A has on these graphs. We could see them as reflections of the graphs of y equals 2 sine x and y equals 2 cosine x. Or we could start with the parent graph's reflections y equals negative sine x and y equals negative cosine x and multiply them by 2. So we can expect the y values on the new graphs to be twice as far away from the x-axis as what they are on the reflection of the parent graph. Either way, these are the graphs we get. The graph for y equals negative 2 sine x and the graph for y equals negative 2 cos x. Let's choose another negative value for a. What do you think the graphs of these two functions will look like? y equal to negative a half sine x and y equal to negative a half cosine x. I hope you're getting the hang of this now. These graphs will be the reflections of the graphs for y equals a half sine x and y equals a half cosine x. Or you could describe them by using the reflection of the parent graph and then multiplying them by a factor of a half. Now have a look at the three negative sign graphs that we've worked with. Here is the graph y equal to negative sine x. This is y equal to negative 2 sine x. And this is y equal to negative a half sine x. We have used two negative values of a, negative 2 and negative a half. Can you use what we found out here to make a conjecture about the effect of A on the sine and the cosine graphs when A is negative? We can say that for A less than negative 1, the graph is stretched vertically by a factor of A. For A between 0 and negative 1, the graph is pulled towards the x-axis by a factor of A. And in the case of the cosine graphs, we see the same thing happening. For a less than negative 1, the graph is stretched vertically away from the x-axis by a factor of a. For a between negative 1 and 0, the graph is pulled towards the x-axis. Now that you have learned about the changes that can occur with the sine and cosine graphs, you should look at the trigonometric functions task video. Keep practicing the graphs in your textbooks and the ones given by your teacher. And if you need more information, look on our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Stick with us and soon you'll be very able to handle trig variables. Goodbye.